Praise the Lord. I welcome you to this wonderful day, the day of the Lord. And it's Sunday. That's going to be a day of strength for you in Jesus' name. You remember all the things that have gone behind in the past week. Those are weak days. But now, a day for strength. And a day for joy. And a day for excitement. Serving the Lord. And the Lord putting a lot into our lives. This service is very important for you, for me, for us. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives. Thank you for your love. And thank you for everything you've done, everything you are going to do, everything you continue to do in our lives. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today, that you will visit everyone afresh in Jesus' name. Your power, your strength, your joy, and your purpose fulfilled in every life even today. Open our eyes, Lord, as we see the message you have sent to us and to everyone. And we pray that this message will do good in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And you say, Amen. Today we're coming to Revelation chapter 2. And as we look at Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Just four verses of scripture. And the Lord is uh, sending a message to the church. He says, please open your Bible with me. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And unto the angel of the church is manner right. These six says the first and the last, which was dead and it's alive. In verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And then in verse 10, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And now in verse 11, bringing us to the conclusion of this letter, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh, shall not be hurt of the second death. That's the message the Lord is wanting us to look at today. And it's the message he sent to the church in Smyrna. As I said uh, last week, if you remember, that this message has a personal application. A personal application to every one of us. Even though it has also a prophetic anticipation. That is, it's something we're looking forward to, or maybe I should say this way, from the time Christ gave the letter to John and to give to the church in Ephesus and the church in Smyrna and the church in uh, uh, Pagamos and the church in Chatira and the church in Sardis and the church in Philadelphia and the church in Laodicea. All those letters, the epistles from Christ unto the church at a prophetic anticipation they were looking forward in every century in every generation that will come until this generation so this message is still for us today as we are getting near the end of the world it was a persecuted church the church actually was centered in a place where there was a caesar worship and there was a lot of persecution because the believers will not go along with the pro of the day, the hero of the day, the God of this world. And because they will not go along with them in serving their God, that's why they were persecuted. But this was a persevering church. And it has a message for the persevering Christian. That's why we're titling this message, The Prevailing Power of Persevering Christians. Persecuted. 
yet we are persevering and we are hemmed around and hedged around with all the difficulties and all the challenges because we will not compromise our faith and we prevail we have the power the power that prevails the prevailing power of persevering christians there are three things we're looking at as we look at this passage together number one the reassurance for persecuted persevering saints it gives us a reassurance it gives you in particular my brother my sister there my son my daughter there he gives you a reassuring statement that he is the first he is the last he was dead and is alive again and because of that whatever the suffering whatever the persecution you will come out at the brighter side of life in jesus name the reassurance for persecuted persevering sins number two the regrets of profane perverted suppressors those persecutors that try to suppress the people of God and they thought they were all in all and they thought they had the power and they had the authority and they had the backing of the powers that be to suppress and to oppress and to persecute the believers point number two their regrets on the final day their regrets even in this life the regrets of profane perverted suppressors point number three the reward a patient, profitable souls. That's who you are. That's who I am. That's who we are. We're going to be profitable. We'll continue to be profitable. We're patient, we're persevering, and we're profitable, and we're going to have a reward. Number three then is the reward of patient, profitable souls. We come to point number one now. Point number one is the reassurance. The reassurance for persecuted, persevering sins. Let's look at that again in Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 8. And unto the church, unto the angel of the church in manner, write, These things says the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. And then in verse 9 it says, I know thy works, I know thy tribulation, I know thy poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. And but they are the synagogue of Satan. Then it says in verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And then it says, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, very brief. It's a short time. It's a, just a short period of time. Thou shalt have tribulation only ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, it says we should be fearless. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. And that, that leads me to the first section of this. The reasons for the fearlessness of purified sins. What reason do I have, my brother? What reason do you have, my sister, that you shall be fearless? And it says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Well, uh, we have uh, that fearlessness because he himself is by our side. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And because of that, it's always present. It's always there. His strength is there. His spirit is there. And the sustaining power of the Lord is there. And he will moderate everything. He will not allow you to be tempted. He will not allow you to be tried. He will not allow you to be oppressed more than you are able. And even then, he will make a way of escape that you will be able to be able. Look at Matthew chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 26. It says, fear them not. See that again, fear them not again, fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered, anything behind the door, anything behind the screen, anything they are planning, the conspiracy of the people against you. It says, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Number one, it is revealed to heaven already. It is revealed uh, to the Savior already. Listen to me now. 
and when it is revealed to heaven if it is not according to the purpose of god for your life it will not be it will not happen the lord will not allow anything to happen in your life that is not according to his purpose for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known look at verse 27 it says in verse 27 what i tell you in darkness that speak ye in the light why because there's no fear that is not going to be fulfilled all the promises he has given you in the dark when you are alone with him in the room with him you can broadcast that you can blow that up on mountain top on housetops because it will be done and it says what ye hear in the ear that preach that proclaim that prophesy ye upon the housetops and then in verse 28 it says and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell verse 29 in verse 29 it says and not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father stay there for a moment it says look at the sparrows they don't have eternal life look at the sparrows jesus did not even die for the sparrows on the cross of calvary it says look at the sparrows the sparrows cannot fulfill an eternal will of god they are not preachers but all the same not one of them falls to the ground without your father can you put yourself beside that spiral and see how valuable you are how worthy you are how important you are how precious you are if not one sparrow that is not up to a farthing because two sparrows are so for a farthing and one of them will not fall to the ground without the knowledge and the permission of your father your heavenly father how much more yourself look at verse 30 in verse 30 it says but the very ears of your head are all numbered the very ears of your head are all numbered what's that saying it says I, I don't know whether i should say the least important part of your life of your body why do i say that your bones are more important than your ears your eyeballs are more important than your ears and your tongue is more important than your ears and your blood system they are more important if the very ears of your head are all numbered your bones are numbered your veins are numbered and the lord is going to protect you my brother my sister you are protected already then in verse 31 it says in verse 31 fear ye not therefore it says therefore because you are precious therefore because you are valuable therefore because god is thinking of you therefore because god has a plan and a purpose for your life fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows ye are of more value than many sparrows and then he tells us in first second timothy chapter one verse seven second timothy chapter one we're looking at verse seven it says for god has not given us the spirit of fear if the spirit of fear comes then it's not coming from god it's coming from the enemy he wants you to fear him so that he can get the better part of you but you will stand for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and then in first john chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 4 it says a year of god little children even the babes in christ year of christ year of god little children and the young men in christ the young women in christ year of god little children and the fathers and the mothers year of god little children and the preachers and the ministers year of god little children and have overcome them 
have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to underline that your Bible. I know many of us will know that verse already, but all the same underline greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're going to do something now. Hold that in your mind. Hold that in your understanding. Hold that in your memory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's come back now to Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at it from verse 9. In verse 9, it says, I know thy works and thy tribulation." But understand, greater is seed that is in you. Christ Jesus is your treasure. Your treasure is greater than the tribulation. And your poverty, Christ Jesus is your provider. Your provider is greater than your poverty. And he says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Your benefactor is greater than the blasphemy of those people. And it says, and they are the sinner of Satan, the sanctuary, your sanctuary, your covering, your refuge is greater than the synagogue of Satan. And then in verse 10, it tells us in verse 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. And the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior and the strengthener is greater than the suffering. And it says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Your deliverer is greater than the devil. And he says, I'll cast you into prison, but your protection and the paradise he will give you eventually is greater than the prison. And ye shall be tried. He's saying that your triumph is greater than your trial. And ye shall have tribulation. Ye shall have the, the treasure that he gives to you. And the treasure in your heart is greater than the tribulation. And he says, be thou faithful unto death our deliverer is greater than that death. That's why it's saying there is nothing to fear. Fear not. Therefore, let me come to a second section now. And it said the resources for the faithful of the persecuted saints. Persecuted saints, we, we can be faithful. And we have resources. What are the resources we have? Number one, the grace of God. God's grace. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's why you can be faithful. Those are our resources. Number two, the, the goodness of God. The Lord himself is good. And you know, when we say God is good, you say, what do you say? Yes, all the time. And when I say all the time, you say God is good all the time then. God is good. The goodness of God, that's our resources. And then the glory of God. It says, if we suffer, the spirit of glory and of life rests upon us. And because of that glory that rests upon us, uh, that, mean, that makes us faithful. We know that whatever the persecution and whatever the suffering, God's grace abides in you. God's goodness abides in you. God's glory abides in you. Not only that, number four now, God's promise also abides in you. He has given us the promise that pertains to life and godliness so that because of that you can have the new nature. There is nothing to fear and we have resources to be faithful. Not only that, we have the presence of God. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. And then we have God's power. God's power. Think about that. God's power abides in you and God's power abides for you who are kept by the power of God, ready to for the salvation, ready to be revealed on the final day. And then we have God's purpose. God had a purpose while you were created. God had a purpose. You became a Christian. God has a purpose. He brought you into the ministry. God has a purpose and is watching over your life. We have God's purpose. And we know that all things work together for good in your life. All things 
work together for good in your family. All things work together for good in the local church and in the church at large. Whatever is happening, pandemic, epidemic, um, plague or whatever, all things work together for good for them who are the called of God, those who are called according to his purpose. Well then, look at all the resources we have. That's why we're faithful. The resources we have for faithfulness. Uh, look at uh, First Timothy chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 12. In First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 12, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you say that now? I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Lift up your head and turn away your mind from whatever may be happening. Uh, you know, there is darkness there, there is rain falling there, and there is uh, something there, there is another thing there. It says, I thank Christ Jesus my Lord. Make it personal who has enabled me as our resources. He'll give you the enablement. He'll give you the power for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And then in chapter 6 of that first Timothy, and we're looking at verse 2. He tells us in chapter 6 and verse 2, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because, look at this, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. We are partakers of the benefit. Forget not all the benefits of the Lord. Praise the Lord and thank the Lord and bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. The benefits flowing from Calvary and the benefits that he has purchased for us, they are all available. They are the resources we have. And because we have those resources, that's why we're not afraid and that's why we are faithful and the Lord will keep you faithful all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Now, as we talk about the resources we have, we have riches in fullness. Riches in fullness. And this is the third part now. Riches in fullness for persevering saints. Riches in fullness. Come to Revelation chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 9. Revelation chapter 2. What are you reading from verse 9? It says, I know thy works. You see, there's not an idle believer, idle minister, idle member. I know thy works in the plural and thy tribulation and thy poverty. Now, all that is external, outside, outwardly, externally. I know the, pro I know the tribulation and I know the trial. I know what is coming from without, but what you have on the inside is is greater and thy poverty that's external that's uh, coming from without and thy poverty when people look at you from the external and from the outside all they can see is poverty but then in bracket now but thou art rich jesus says thou art rich heaven says thou art rich the word of God says thou art rich. The gospel says thou art rich. He has enriched us. He has enriched us. We have the riches of his grace. We have the riches of his goodness. We have the riches of godliness. And we have the riches of glory. And look at James chapter chapter 2 verse 5. In James chapter 2 verse 5, he's telling us as not Hakina, my brethren, my beloved brethren, as not God choosing the poor of this world, reach in faith. You must think about that. You must underline that. Reach in faith. When you, when you have faith, you have, you have salvation. When you have faith, you have purity of heart. When you have faith, you have the power of God. When you have faith, you will have answers to a prayer. When you have faith, you'll be able to quench all the funny darts of the wicked. When you have faith, you'll be able to walk victoriously. When you have faith, you will be an overcomer. And it says God has chosen you to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him. He has promised everything to you And you are rich in Jesus name Look at Ephesians chapter 1 We're reading from verse 18 Ephesians chapter 1 We're reading from verse 18 The eyes of your understanding being enlightened That ye may know 
what is the hope of his calling look at this now and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints the riches of his glory and the glory of his inheritance in the saints that's what you have that's the reason why we see we have the riches in fullness for persevering saints in chapter 2 of uh, Ephesians Ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 7 it says that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace understand that the exceeding riches of his grace what grace can do in our lives what grace can accomplish in our lives and we have the riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through christ jesus it tells us in um, in chapter 3 verse 16 uh, in uh, ephesians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 16 it tells us there that he will grant you praise the lord you even you today that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man your inner man your spirit your soul your mind your heart will be strengthened according to the riches of his glory look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think look at that word there we not they let me read it this other way now unto him that is able to do according uh, uh, exceeding abundantly and abundantly above all that they ask or think who are the day oh i remember when moses preached I remember when Joshua preached. I remember when uh, Jeremiah preached. I remember when Daniel preached. Hold on now. Not according as above all that they ask. Now it's your turn. You too can pray. And you too will pray. And God will answer your prayer. You will be fearless in Jesus' name. You will be faithful in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to do are exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek look at this according to the power that worketh in us according to the power that worketh in us as you pray today as you make your request known to the lord today as you want the lord to strengthen you in the inner man today where is the power of the spirit going to work tell me tell me where is the power of God going to work? That's right. It's going to work in you. According to the power that worketh in us. We're coming to point number two now. As we look at point number two, we're going to read from Revelation chapter two. Revelation chapter two. And I'm reading from the, the second part of verse nine. It says in the second part, and I know the blasphemy of them. And I know the blasphemy of them. Can I tell you something? The persecutors don't know that God knows everything about them. Can I tell you something? The sinners, the oppressors, the suppressors, and the scorners, and the, and the, uh, the scornful people, they do not know that the Lord knows everything about them. They think we are the only people that God is, uh, you know, he knows everything that we do. He knows our down sitting. He knows our rising up. He knows when we we'll go to the right. He knows when we we'll go to the back. He knows when we we'll go to the front. He knows what the unbelievers are doing. He says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. And at the synagogue of Satan, he says, I know, look at verse 10. In verse 10. Fear none of those things that which thou shalt suffer. It says, those who make you suffer, I know even before they bring out what they're doing from their secret place, already know. 
And if I want to diffuse it, I can do that. It says, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. He knows what the devil is doing and what the devil will ever do, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. A crown is waiting for you. Now, the regrets of profane perverted suppressors and number one is the ignorance of saints persecutors the ignorance they don't know and yet god says christ says i know i know because i know all things look at deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 21 Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 21. This is what the persecutors are ignorant of. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befalling them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. Look at this. For I know their imagination which go uh, which go about even now before i have brought them into the land which i swear the lord says i know i know their imagination i know their thoughts i know their plans and i know all the things they'll try to do look at uh, isaiah chapter 37 and we're looking at verse 28 i say Chapter 37, looking at verse 28, But I know thy abode. Anybody hiding somewhere to throw anything at a child of God, to throw anything at you, God says, I know. I know thy abode and thy going out and thy coming in. Every time, you know, they go here, they go there, and thy rage against me. I know. Look at Isaiah chapter 66, and we're reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 66, reading from verse 18. God knows, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. I know their works, and I know their thoughts. On a line eight in your Bible, God knows what those sinners are trying to bring out. God knows what your suppressors are trying to do. God knows, and He will not allow them to go beyond the limit He has set. Look at this in Amos chapter five. Amos chapter five, looking at verse twelve. Amos chapter five, verse twelve. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins; they afflict the just. Those who suppress the just, afflict the just, persecute the just, he knows. Those who turn justice around, he knows. They turn justice upside down, he knows. He says, I know your manifold transgressions. I know your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. They turn aside the poor in the gate for their right. And you know what the Lord is saying? What you have done to my believers, to my followers, to my disciples, you have done unto me. Now, number two is the iniquity of Satan's perverts. The iniquity of Satan's perverts. Uh, let's look at John chapter 8. In John chapter 8... Reading from verse 37, the iniquity, the evil things that they do. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, religious people, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. The Lord said, I know your iniquity, the iniquity of Satan's perverts. They were perverted by the devil. Look at verse 44. It says in verse 44, yeah, of your father, the devil, strange, very clear, pointed. And it says, yeah, of your father, the devil, and the loss of your father, ye will do. They thought they were free. 
They thought they were at liberty. They said we are not in bondage. We are not controlled by anybody. We do everything we do by ourselves. And Jesus said, you don't know. You are ignorant. Your iniquity is that you are doing the deeds of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him and when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That tells us then that the iniquity of the unbelievers, the iniquity of the persecutors is the work of Satan. They were perverted by the devil. And that's the reason why they do what they do. In First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. You see that? It's the deceiving spirits, the seducing spirits, the enticing spirits, influencing them, and doctrines of devils. That's the iniquity. They are perverted by Satan, and they are working for Satan, and they are doing the will of Satan, and they are preaching the doctrines of the devil. In verse 2, it says in verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What's going to be the result of those ignorant persecutors? What's going to be the result of those powers that practice iniquity that brings us to this latter point now? The indignation against sanctuary pretenders. Sanctuary pretenders. Why do we say they are pretenders? Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 Reading from verse 16, it says, They profess that they know God. They say they are Jews, but are not. They say they are religious, but they are not righteous. They say they belong to God. They are the children of Abraham, but they didn't do the works of Abraham. They profess that they know God. They profess they are the church people. They profess that they are Bible believers. They profess they are Christians. But then it says it's only the word of mouth. They profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. What's the indignation? What's the problem? What's going to be the a challenge for them. It tells us in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 41. Then shall you say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Those who serve the devil, hear now. And they don't repent, and they don't turn around, and they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they keep on serving the devil until they die, and there is no repentance. They will spend eternity with the devil in the lake of fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Look at verse 46. In verse 46, and these, those are the followers of Satan, and these, those are the people serving the devil without repentance. And these, those are the people who are ignorant. They don't know that God knows their persecutors, their pretenders, and their suppressors. And these shall go into everlasting punishment. But thank God for the believer. Thank God for you as a believer. Thank you. Thank God for you as a child of God. But the righteous into life eternal. I pray life eternal will be your Lord on the final day in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number three now. In point number three, we have a reward. You're going to have a reward. Say, I'm going to have a reward. The Lord will keep you faithful. And as the Lord keeps you faithful, He'll give you reward on the final day in Jesus' name. Look at Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. 
Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. We explained that already. You are not afraid because you know the one who succors you, the one who strengthens you, is greater than any suffering the devil can bring about. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. We said that already. Your deliverer is greater than the devil, and your protector is greater than that prison. And you shall be tried. We have said that already. Your triumph will be greater than your trial, and you shall have tribulation. We have said that already. And the one that is the treasure in your life will be greater than that tribulation. Be thou faithful. Unto death, we have explained that already. You'll be faithful, I'll be faithful. We have the resources to be faithful. And look at the reward now. And I will give you a crown of life. And I will give you a crown of life. You'll have a crown. And nobody will take your crown in Jesus' name. Look at the promise of God, number one now. The crown of life for the overcomer. The crown of life for the overcomer. We're looking at First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. Look at verse twenty-five. In First Corinthians chapter nine, reading from verse twenty-five, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are an incorruptible. You will have an incorruptible crown. You will have a crown that will not fade away. You will have a crown you will never lose, you will never miss. And we are fighting and we are striving for the mastery so that we can have an incorruptible crown. In verse 26, it says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, fighting the good fight of faith, not as one that beateth the air. Verse 27, it says, but I keep under my body. And Paul the Apostle is saying, I'm a man under authority and a man having authority. I have authority over my hands. I have authority over my tongue. I have authority over my feet. I have authority over my thoughts. You know, there are some people, they don't have authority over their hand. They just write and write. They don't have authority over their mind. They just think and think wild thoughts. They allow their mind to run away from them. They allow their hands to run away from them. They allow their eyes to run away from them. Paul the Apostle said, I have authority. Because I'm under authority, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I preach to others, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm not going to be like a conductor. Getting people into the taxi, getting people into the minibus, getting people into the omnibus to travel to a destination. And then I remain behind. It says, I've been talking of heaven. I'm not going to, just going to send people to heaven. I'm going there myself. I've been talking about glory. I'm not just going to show glory to other people. I'm getting there myself. I've been talking about paradise and the third heaven. I'm not just going to describe it to other people. I'm getting there. He said, lest I should preach by any means. I should preach unto others. And I myself, he cast away. Paul the apostle said, I make up my mind. I will not be a castaway. My brother, you'll not be a castaway. My sister, you'll not be a castaway in Jesus' name because there's a crown waiting for us. And we're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 5. If a man also strive for masteries, yet is see no crown, except he strive lawfully. Except he does everything lawfully according to the word of God. That's why we're praying for the grace of God in our lives that everything we say, everything we do, 
Everything we act out, whatever it is, every time we will do everything according to the word of God. You will be crowned finally, eventually, in Jesus' name. Look at uh, Second uh, Timothy chapter four, and I'm reading from verse eight. Second Timothy chapter four, and we're reading from verse eight. It says, "As forth there is laid up for me." a crown of righteousness paul the apostle said i am sure these persecutors will not take my crown i'm sure this suffering will not take my crown i'm sure this trial will not take my crown i am sure these uh, tempters and temptresses will not take my crown he says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge is a righteous judge he will not forget what I've done for the glory of his name. He will not uh, forget what I've done for the exaltation and the preaching of the gospel. He will not forget his righteous judge. He will not forget your impact and your preaching and your influence upon people to encourage them and make them have progress towards the kingdom of God. The righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them you are included but unto all them i'm included but unto all them we're all included also that love is appearing look at james chapter one in james chapter one we're reading from verse 12 james chapter one we're reading from verse 12 blessed is the man he's talking about you brother is talking about your sister is talking about your believer blessed is the man blessed is the one that endures temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to them that love him the lord has promised it and the lord will fulfill it you will wear a crown and nobody will take your crown in jesus name now we need to understand this if we're not going to allow a crown to be taken we must bear the cross at this time because if there is no cross there'll be no crown the cross must come before the crown that leads me to the second section the cross in the life of all overcomers all overcomers everyone the cross in the life of all overcomers look at matthew chapter 16 in matthew chapter 16 verse 24 matthew chapter 16 reading from verse 24 it tells us then said jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me if you leave the cross behind and you're running empty and dead, you're not bearing the cross, how are you going to wear your crown? When we know there must be the cross before the crown, but he says, if anyone will come after me, if anyone will follow me, let him take up his cross. Take up his cross. Underline that. His cross not another man's cross not another woman's cross not another believer's cross you know i'm surprised about some people they have their cross to bear they leave that aside they're not bearing their own cross and they're trying to bear the cross of other people they're not looking at their challenge in their own personal lives and they are not counseling themselves, advising themselves, and praying for themselves how they can bear their own cross. And they are busy trying to counsel other people, help other people, challenge other people, encouraging other people. They say, hey, bear that cross, and I can bear it for you. My brother, my sister, let's be sober. Let's be very thoughtful. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. It says in chapter 14 of Acts, confirming the souls 
of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith exhorting us to continue in the faith exhorting me exhorting you to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation trial enter into the kingdom of god that trial that temptation that difficulty that challenge that is our own cross we bear the cross happily and cheerfully and joyfully because we know we're moving nearer and nearer the crown it tells us in second timothy chapter 3 verse 12 second timothy chapter 3 verse 12 it says ye and all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution that's the cross that's the cross as a young believer that's the cross all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution as an adult as a minister as a worker as a believer all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution if you take godliness as important as uh, you as you're making it to the final end if you take holiness as very important the person that will make it to the final end all that will be holy all that will be godly all that will be pure all that will be righteous all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution verse 13 it says in verse 13 but evil men those are the persecutors and seducers those are the tempters temptresses shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived in verse 14 it says but continue bear the cross continue endure the shame continue endure the suffering continue endure whatever may come as a result of you living a non-compromising life but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and as we endure looking unto jesus we're going to have the victory we're going to have the triumph and we're going to have the crown eventually in hebrews chapter 12. hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 1. in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 wherefore seeing ye also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses is referring back to chapter 11 all those who bore their cross, Abel, all those who lived godly, Enoch, all those who did what the Lord wanted them to do, Noah, all those that did the will of God when God called them and he responded, Abraham, all those who judged him faithful that are promised like Sarah, all those people that followed after the past, the Lord said before them, I see Jacob and Joseph, all the people that faithfully did the will of God, Moses, and all the people that did everything the Lord called them to do, not minding the cross, all those people until you have Gideon and Samson and David and Jephthah and everyone he says, wherefore, We've seen we also are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Why? You cannot carry that weight and carry the cross at the same time. Lay aside the weight and the sin will not so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Why? We're running towards the crown. We're running towards the reward. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Look at this verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith is the first and the last, is the alpha and the omega, is the foundation and the fortress, is the supporter and the succorer, is a savior is a sanctifier we're looking up to him all the time looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross 
despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. As we keep on looking unto him and every hurdle we jump, we overcome. Every trial we're triumphant and every cross we bear cheerfully and every trial, every tribulation we overcome, we're going to cross over. And you are going to cross over. Every day in our lives we'll cross over to the better part of life in Jesus' name. Every week, every month, Every year we'll cross over and then when the final time comes that the Lord will say come over, we'll cross over in Jesus' name. Number three now, our crossing over when this life is over. My brother, it will soon be over. My sister, it will soon be over. Trials will soon be over. Persecution will soon be over. Suffering will soon be over. Labor will soon be over. Endeavoring to overcome this, overcome that will soon be over. And when life, this life is over, we're crossing over. Come to Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verse 11. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 11, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Look at this. He that overcometh, who is that? Tell me his name. Tell me her name. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That's you. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Look at that. He shall not be hurt at the second death. Look at Revelation chapter 20 verse 6. In Revelation chapter 20 verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Blessed and holy those people who are going to overcome and they will not be hurt at the second death, they are blessed for salvation. They are blessed in the beloved. They are blessed in Christ. They are blessed by the sanctifier. They are blessed in the power of the Holy Ghost. They are blessed by the promises of God. Blessed and holy. The blood of Jesus Christ washes them, cleanses them, purges them, purifies them, and makes them holy. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. When Christ shall come, the people who have endured, the people who are cheerfully following the Lord, when Christ shall come and the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we, you and I, and we, we believers, and we, the people who will endure to the end, and we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, such will not have the suffering of the second death. The second death has no power upon them, but they shall be as priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh, look at what it says in Luke chapter 20, verse 36. What will you look like? What will we look like at that time when Christ comes and he takes us up? And we are with him forever. And we are not going to take part. We are not going to suffer the second death. It says in Luke chapter 20 verse 36. Neither can they die anymore. They die once. And then the second death will not come. Neither shall they die anymore. They are raised up resurrected and they will not die anymore neither can they die anymore or they are raptured and they are taken up to heaven like Enoch was taken to heaven like Elijah was taken to heaven and they will not die anymore the raptured church the church waiting for the bridegroom the bride of Christ were taken away. And he says, neither can they die anymore. Look at this. For they are equal unto the angels. They are equal. They have life forever. They live forever. 
They live in joy forever. They live in freedom forever. They live in paradise forever. They are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of resurrection. Being the children of resurrection. Let's come back to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. Revelation chapter 21. We're reading from verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Let me remind you that this is for you. And God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. Say amen. That's a dull amen. I said to say a bright amen. Amen. God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. And there shall be no more death. Look at that. Because the overcomers, he that overcometh shall not be hurt in a second death. There will be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, no more suffering. For the former things are passed away. It is soon coming and you will inherit glory in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 22 of Revelation. And we're reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22. We're reading from verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. My brother, my sister, we're nearer the end than many years ago. Now he's coming. He says, behold, I come quickly. He says, behold, I come quickly, keep on enduring. It will not be long, Christ will come. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Are you doing any work for Christ according as his work shall be? Are you going to go before the Lord empty-handed? You are not evangelizing. You are not preaching. You are not interceding. You are not encouraging people. You are not visiting people. You are not uh, giving the word of life to people. Do something so that you will not go before the Lord empty-handed. He says, I'm coming and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last Verse 14, beautiful. Look at verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. I pray that will be spoken of you. I pray that will be spoken of us together. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter and may enter, and may enter in through the gates into the city. I can picture you on the final day when Christ will come, when Christ will call you. I can picture you all the past things gone. I can picture you all your sorrows gone, all your suffering gone, all the things you had to endure, all the pressure, everything is gone. I can picture you that Christ is saying it's time Everything is over. It's time. All your suffering over. It's time. All your tribulation over. It's time. All your challenges over. I can picture you. I can see you in my mind's eye as the Lord is going to call you. And he's saying, now the way is open for you. The door is open for you. I can see you rising up. I can see you going up. I can see you triumphantly and cheerfully and boldly and courageously and sinfully entering in through the gates into the city, the everlasting city of a great God. It will happen. It will happen. If there's any kind of weakness, tell the Lord, oh Lord, take the weakness away. I know it will not be long and I will soon enter in. You will enter in. Heaven is for you. Glory is for you. The paradise is for you. And the city of the living God is for you. You will enter there in Jesus' name. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right and privilege, that they may have the ticket, the chance, the opportunity 
to the tree of life and that they may enter in through the gates into the city. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. We've heard a lot today. I will see what God said he'll do. He'll give you my brother. He'll give you my daughter. He'll give you my sister. He'll give you my boy, my girl. He'll give you the prevailing power. You'll persevere as a Christian. Right, so, right, so. It's not the time to talk to that other person. And what did he say? What we're saying is we we'll rise up to pray. As we pray, tell the Lord, the Lord has introduced himself. And he says, I'm the first. He says, I'm the last. He says, I'm he that was dead. I'm alive again forevermore. He says, it's the one that will strengthen you. Get his strength and get his power and get the authority you need in your life. He has told us already that he is the one that is going to sustain us. And he gives us reassurance. He's giving you reassurance now. And he's telling you. He's giving you the reasons. Why you should be fearless. He tells us that greater is he that is in us. That he that is in the world. The greater one my brother abides in you. The greater one my sister abides in you. Is the greater one. Is a strengthener, is a greater one, is a supporter. Your supporter is a greater one, is the power of God in man, in woman, is the greater one. He lives in you. That's the reason you can be fearless. This protection is greater than all the imprisonment the world can think about. Is the greater one. And as he calls you and he says, Follow me. He'll make you triumphant and he'll make you victorious. Not only that, if there is any kind of trial, the treasure lives within you. The triumphant one lives within you. He said, because I overcame, you will overcome. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The greater one, let him live within you. You know the resources you have? You have the grace of God and his grace is sufficient for you. You have the goodness of God. His goodness will never fail in your life. If there's sin, there's forgiveness. If there's weakness, there is strength. If there is a compromise of the past, there is courage now. Let the goodness of God abide in your life. There is God's glory. The weight of glory will abide in you. And there's the promise of God for you, my brother, my sister. There is the presence of God. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And there is the power of God. That power will keep you until the final day. And there is the purpose of God. All things will work together for good in your life. It will. It will. And you have the riches, the riches in fullness. The riches in fullness so that you will be a persevering sage and a crown is waiting for you my brother a crown is waiting for you my sister you will not miss your crown and that crown for the overcomer it's yours it's yours it's yours and even now even now you will reign in life and then whatever the cross bear the cross you will overcome. He'll give you the strength to be an overcomer. And every time when you pray, the Lord will be by your side. You will cross over. And on the final day, when everything is over, when everything is over, picture that heaven, you'll get there. Picture that paradise, you'll get there. Picture that new Jerusalem, you'll get there. You'll be one of the saints, triumphant saints in heaven. You will cross over when life is over. Everything will be over. The tears, the sorrows, everything will be over. And then you'll cross over. The grace of God abide more and more in your life. And the goodness of God abide more and more in your life. And the glory of God shield you and protect you through to the end of life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. And we bless your name for your word. 
Thank you, Lord, because you've strengthened your people, energized your people, endued your people with power. And Lord, we pray, any challenge in our lives, make everyone an overcomer in Jesus' name. You are the healer of the sick. You are the sustainer of those who are suppressed. And you are the deliverer for those who are oppressed or bound in any way. And we pray that you come in with your power and you make everyone have overcoming strength and power in their lives. In Jesus' name, any temporary problem there, we're praying, deal with them. Take them away in Jesus' name. And until then, until we see you face to face, give us the enablement, give us the power, give us the triumph, and give us the victory that our faith in you will always overcome in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, none of us will fade by the wayside. None of us will stop our journey halfway through. We'll come to the final end eventually, one by one, and we'll cross over, always cross over, always cross over to the brighter side of life in Jesus' name. And finally, at the end, we'll cross over to the heaven you have gone to prepare for everyone. I pray that none of my brothers, none of my sisters, none of the people who are listening today will lose our crown in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing upon every life today. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Continue in the victory of the Lord in Jesus' name.